Hi everyone, this is Trevor from astrobackyard.com and in this video I'm going to shoot a deep sky target here in my backyard in the city. So we're still in the middle of galaxy season right now, we're at the end of April, but uh, some of the larger nebulae that I like to capture the most are coming up if you stay up late enough. I'll be capturing a nebula target, it's a reflection nebula, it's the Iris Nebula, NGC 7023. Now this one hangs around Polaris, the North Star. It starts swinging its way up high enough for me to photograph it around just after midnight really, and then as time goes on it gets better and better. The conditions aren't the greatest tonight. We've got a 65% illuminated moon that's coming up just after midnight. And it's one of those nights where it's clear, but it's there's a thin layer of high hazy clouds that kind of kill the transparency. So not ideal for imaging, but I'll take what I can get. It's really wet out there too. I've got dew heater bands on my primary imaging telescope and my guide scope to combat dew because that's one way you can really ruin your imaging session. To power those dew heater bands, I'm using the Pegasus Astro Pocket Power Box and I really love this thing since I've had it. So there's two RCA style ports on the power box that I've got my dew heater bands plugged into and then that power box also powers my ASI Air camera controller and then the 294 camera itself and it's all riding along there on the, the Esprit 100 telescope. It's just such a handy system to have and once you get used to an onboard computer system like that as opposed to uh, having wires just draped across and potentially snagging on things, it's tough to go back. It's an all Skywatcher rig tonight for the most part with the EQ6R Pro mount and the Esprit 100 APO refractor. Now this telescope, I've had a chance to use it a lot over the fall, a little bit in the winter and now here in the spring. It's just an excellent telescope. I know I've used a lot of refractors, but I've had a chance to play with a lot of the image data that was captured through the Esprit 100, and it's just a top-notch refractor. I think you'll find that if you ask anyone that owns these Esprit telescopes that you'll find them with a, a similar response. I'm really enjoying using the ASI Air as well. I'm getting more comfortable with it after so many years of using a laptop to image. It's a bit unsettling at first to, to control everything on your phone or on a tablet. It just doesn't feel right. But uh, I feel a lot more comfortable with it now and I've pretty much, I use it for my entire imaging session except for the polar alignment. So I set the laptop up quickly to do the pol... So I set the laptop up initially to do my polar alignment sequence using the Pole Master, which is like honestly two to three minutes total. And then I can remove the laptop from the equation and I just carry around my tablet with me to do the rest of the imaging session. That includes focusing, framing, doing the star alignment, uh, everything, and of course running that actual sequence and auto guiding. The ASI Air is really capable and once you learn how to use all the features, because you kind of got to dig into those settings to, to actually experience them, you'll feel a lot more comfortable if you're like me. So I'm really loving it and I'm gonna be using it to control my imaging session of the Iris Nebula tonight. Using the pole master, I just have to do a one star alignment on the mount and then my object is dead centered, which is amazing. So again, I use the ASI Air to do this process of, of alignment and then focusing. I still use a Batonoff mask, although there is a fine tuning focus mode that you can use for the more advanced users that want to use the half flux diameter mode. 
because the iris nebula is a basically a broadband target it's a reflection nebula that's reflecting blue light off that central star it's really it's a really beautiful target with a lot of dust that blocks stars in front of it and the dust is kind of brownish you don't need narrow bands or harsh light pollution filters to capture it it is a bit challenging to shoot from the city using nothing but a, a just a luminance filter a uv ir cut filter but uh, in post-processing, you can certainly bring out that beautiful color and get some of those natural star colors. So here is where the Iris Nebula is in Cepheus. So you can see real close to the North Celestial Pole. There's Polaris there, and it's just over here. So like I said, this month, it's just starting to swing up high enough to photograph. And uh, May and June are great times to photograph the Iris Nebula. And uh, because it's so close to the pole, it's up for a lot of the night, so you can really sink some serious time into it. It's really clearing up out there, so I might actually get some decent images of the Iris Nebula after all. So they are four minute exposures using a gain of 120 with a UV IR cut filter. So it's getting higher into the sky and getting, my images are getting crisper as I get out of the glow from the city as it gets higher and higher. So. Really excited about this image of the Iris Nebula. Hopefully I get at least an hour or so on it. Also, when I stand at the far end of the yard, I can see where certain, some of my favorite summer astrophotography targets are gonna appear in my night sky. So I can see Antares and Scorpius, and I can even see Jupiter rising right now. And uh, so I can see where stuff like the Lagoon Nebula and the Trifid, stuff that's really low from the Northern Hemisphere, is gonna appear in my night sky. And I have a much bigger window than I did at the last house. So I'm really excited about that. And that kind of gets my blood pumping for summer. So here's hoping uh, we have some a lot of clear nights in the summer and I get to shoot some of my favorite targets here in the new backyard. I hope you enjoy the image of the Iris Nebula at the end of the video. And uh, until next time, clear skies. <laughs>